Welcome back, everybody, to Let's Talk About Sleep. Got to show the book number one, book number two on, on its way in production as we speak. So keep an eye out for that. As we get closer to a thousand subscribers, one lucky viewer at random will get a signed copy of that. But you got to be of the first book. I mean, you got to be in it to win it. So make sure you subscribe. Please click like. Please share this with your friends and family. And as I always say, these videos are for education only. With that being said, let's talk about today's topic, which is kind of uh, a popular one. Um, last last few days, people have been talking about this new study which came out, linking naps to hypertension, which is high blood pressure, and other uh, medical conditions. So we're going to talk about that uh, right now. So um, actually, it was an American Heart Association study, so pretty pretty well powered in terms of how many people they had and what they were looking for. But the study had some problems, which we're going to talk about. Okay, so what they found was that frequent or usual daytime napping, I'm just reading from the study here, was associated with a 24% risk of having a stroke and a 12% risk of developing high blood pressure. Okay, pretty, pretty terrible statistics. Uh, and the thinking behind it, which we're going to go over, is that napping by itself is not unhealthy, which I've talked many times about on this channel, but what it could be a sign of can be unhealthy, okay? So the higher percentage of nappers, frequent nappers, was men, had a lower education income levels, reported daily drinking, cigarette smoking, insomnia, snoring, and being an evening person compared to those who never napped, okay? Um... This was published in the journal Hypertension, which, as I said, is an American Heart Association journal. And uh, these were pub these were uh, researchers from China, but they looked at um, UK data, okay, from a bio from a biobank of a lot of different um, collection of a lot of different uh, uh, study material, you know, information on on patients. So, all right. So, what do we make of all this? So, I mean, the cat's out of the bag. This is looking at patients who are. Or I should say, this is this is focused on patients who kind of are unhealthy to begin with, right? So you got men who snore, who drink daily, right? If you watch this channel, you know what is that? What is that kind of linked to? Sleep apnea, right? So very very likely these patients are not sleeping well at nighttime because they have untreated obstructive sleep apnea, which we know for sure is not good for your heart health, right? So these patients have disrupted poor nighttime quality sleep so even if they sleep eight hours let's say right the quality is impaired and the next day they're tired so what's one of the things they do to offset that is by taking a nap okay naps himself are not unhealthy okay and I talk about that quite a bit on this channel there's a lot of literature showing that people who do have poor quality sleep the night before a 20 30 minute nap the next day can actually reduce some of the inflammation and some of the bad um, outcomes of not sleeping well. But what this study is showing is that those who do it chronically or have to do it every day, there's something amiss going on with the nighttime sleep. Now, the way it's sensationalized on the internet and, and news articles is that napping itself causes strokes and causes high blood pressure, which is not true. Okay, Naps can be a problem if they go too long or too late. Right, So if somebody's napping for an hour or two hours in the, in the early or late afternoon, yeah, that's going to be a problem because it's going to disrupt their nighttime sleep and you know, kind of perpetuate this issue. But as I said, a 20, 30 minute nap early in the day usually is fine. Okay, But my question is to anybody, it's why? You know, why do you have to nap? And you know, the answer is usually because there is some problem with the nighttime sleep which should be addressed. Okay, And this study is just really just confirming that. So. I hope that laid to rest some fears out there from this article. Um, you know, they uh, every now and then these these things come out which are in this you know the sleep world and they get everybody all worked up. But this one is pretty pretty uh, pretty easy to understand the answer. So that's the that's the video for today. If you know somebody who naps frequently or needs to nap frequently, or you know somebody who has disrupted nighttime sleep leading to naps the next day. You definitely want to get them tested. Show them this video and get them tested. If you have any questions on this or comments on this, leave them in the comment section down below. And uh, until next time, sleep well.